We love you guys. We love what you do. And you've been very kind to us. And uh, I think all the viewers will appreciate our stories. I think they're very powerful and we've inspired a lot of people. Most of it concerns eating good, healthy food. The reason that we like to tell our stories is because we truly believe that um, so many people think when they get sick that there's no hope. They're not given any hope by their doctor and said, this is the way it's got to be. We actually have a phrase for that called the nocebo. You know what a placebo is. A nocebo is when you go to the doctor, you're diagnosed with a disease, and you're really given no hope. You're told that you'll never get better, that you have to take medication. Well, here's my story. In the fall of 1992, we went on a trip to China for three weeks. And while we were there, we both got really sick with upper respiratory infections. And when we came home and I got better, a few weeks later, I woke up one morning and I couldn't open my left eye. We went to the doctor and he took one look at me and he said, I think you have Bell's palsy. And I looked at him and I said, I think I have myasthenia gravis. Now, Lucy, don't ask me where this came from because it's a very uncommon neuro, you know, autoimmune disease. My intuition told me that there was something going on that he was wrong about. I had never heard about the, that, that disease. I mean, at the time, we only knew of two people that even had it, Aristotle Onassis and, and Margaret's husband. The neurologist said, well, we can find out if you're right. And he shot something in my arm. My eye popped open and he said, you're right. It is myasthenia gravis. He said, it's incurable. You'll have it for the rest of your life. You'll be on medication the rest of your life and your lifespan will be shortened. In 2003, we moved to a small town in Western North Carolina. The first week we're here, Bob sees in the local newspaper that there's a myasthenia gravis support group at the local hospital. We started going to these meetings every month. And one thing I noticed, Lucy, is that everybody had not just myasthenia gravis, but they had diabetes, heart trouble. One month, they had a clinical nutritionist come from Asheville to speak to our group. And with a slide presentation, he showed how even eating white meat chicken compromises the immune system. And he recommended switching to a plant-based diet. He recommended reading the China Study by T. Colin Campbell and Diet for a New America by John Robbins. I immediately went home, got both books and read them cover to cover. Nobody ever mentioned Food. Now, let me just tell you, at this time, when this was all going on, Bob also developed a problem. I had a growth on the outside of my left kidney. I met a urologist. He was only one of two people in America that used a special type of surgery for this, and it was called cryoablation, where they actually froze off this tumor. I'm in his office, and finally comes in, and he said... Uh, well, we took three biopsies after we took this tumor off. Two were okay, but one was not. You have renal cell carcinoma. It means you have kidney cancer. Really told me that uh, to be aware, to be on guard, this could return. We said, we got to do something here. And that's when we both decided no meat, no dairy, go only whole food plant-based. And that's how it all started. I think too, people as they age seem to think they're going to get sick. It's just part of aging. And getting older doesn't have to mean getting sicker. Here we are in our 80s. We've got more energy. We're in better health than our, our grandkids. The I, only I, person you can change is yourself. You can't push anybody into no. it. They have to want to do it. And uh, I have a little postscript to my doctor in, in, uh, at Duke University. Well, he was a young guy. And when I came back for a follow-up visit, and I had to have several of them, you know, yeah. uh, he scoffed at me when I told him that I went plant-based. 
And then I learned years later that he went plant-based. So that sort of made my day where the doctor yeah. d- did it as well. Excellent. I get calls from my insurance company regularly asking if they could send a nurse over to examine me because <laughs> I'm not taking any prescription drugs. Yeah. People that we know, uh, they think that we just, well, at least at first, they think we just eat brown rice with some cooked vegetables on top. So Fran has made cooking more of a hobby. The thing is, I think you can eat plant-based and we eat whole food plant-based and uh, we don't we don't eat oil as well. You can be that way by making creative food. Say one of you in your in your household wants to go plant based or try it, but oh, my husband, no way, he he has to have his meat. I think if you create a beautiful looking and a delicious tasting meal with a little bit of flair, it's a winner. Morning, we have uh, oats in some form either hot, you know, a steel cut oatmeal, or um, I make a granola out of um, rolled oats, or we would have uh, on the weekend, maybe a pancakes or French toast or, um, you know, but all healthy, all oil-free. I don't use, oh, another thing, when we switched to the plant-based doctor here, the first thing he had us do is read, um, reverse and prevent heart disease by Dr. Esselstyn. And we thought we were eating really healthy because neither of us has ever had a weight problem. So olive oil was never an issue. We, you, I used a ton of olive oil. I used it in salad dressings. I used it in um, cooking. Well, he had, out the olive. he has cut out oil. And the first month we each lost 10 pounds and we didn't need to lose any weight. So I either use water or vegetable broth and sauteing. It's very simple. Um, but uh, we eat a wide variety of foods in a, many different countries, Indian, Italian, uh, Thai, Chinese, uh, Vietnamese. I mean, we're just all over the place. We can't travel, so we can travel with our taste buds. I usually have a pot of soup, wonderful for um, lunch. Or if you need a quick dinner, pot of soup and a baked potato. And I have this cheese sauce that I made. I make with cashews or white beans. And of course, I've got an instant pot and makes wonderful soups and stews. With COVID, the price of meat has gone up. So you're, you're buying fruit and vegetables and grains. You're not buying meat and fish. Much cheaper. So for dinner, we've had enchiladas from Mexico. Chinese stir fry, a lasagna. We have an anti-child trafficking organization in Thailand. And so Fran actually got friendly with a couple of the top chefs in Chiang Mai, Thailand. She's a great Thai cook. So we have some delicious Thai curries or Thai stir fries or noodle dishes. I love the noodle dishes. Be creative. Experiment. Experiment with this stuff, but give it a try, even if it's for one month and see how you feel. The energy level alone is a turn on. Our stories are not unique. There are scores of people who have reversed disease with a plant-based diet. People are not living longer. They're dying longer. And our goal is that to enjoy the third third of our lives. I don't want to be beholden to doctors and pills and tests and hospitals. I don't want that in my life, and I don't think anyone should. That's yeah. our whole thing. We're enjoying being the in the 80s. We're actually reversing our age. We were actually 104, and now we're back down into the 80s. Okay. All right, look forward. Bye. Thank you.